view is a new 2D platformer with an interesting glide mechanic, but does it soar into the sky or burn itself reaching for the sun and crash into the ocean? Let's find out. Before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to the developers CoatSync for providing a review copy for us. And I also want to introduce a new scoring system for SwitchUp. The way it's going to work is there will be five main categories that we'll be scoring a game on. Each of these categories will get a score out of 20 and the five scores will be added up at the end to give us an overall percentage score. The story of Shu is told through unvoiced cutscenes and tells a tale of a catastrophic event occurring. Shu and his people must make it to a new, safer land whilst avoiding the end of the world quite literally personified as a land-devouring beast. The graphics are charming with characters hand-drawn and the backgrounds using a 3D style. The two different styles work quite well together and the visual style is certainly one of the game's strengths. In some ways, the game reminds me of the more recent Rayman games. There are some nice lighting effects on show I particularly enjoyed the forest levels where the sunlight can be seen shining through the trees. Everything is colourful and vibrant and there is almost a matte painting feel to the backgrounds. Graphics for me get a 17 out of 20. Music in the game is pleasant and doesn't ever intrude. Some levels have more music than others, while some start with little more than ambient sounds and build up into a musical track as the level progresses. Some of these ambient background sounds, such as waves crashing and crickets chirping, really do add to the experience in quite an implicit way. The music complements the graphics nicely, but was not quite as impactful and gets a 12 out of 20. Controls are tight and responsive, which is essential in a fast-paced platformer of this nature. One thing that struck me initially was just how fast your character seemed to move. The first few levels, though, are quite forgiving, and by the time the game ramps it up, you will probably be used to this and not even notice it anymore. I had no real problems at all with the controls and I would award this area a 17 out of 20. The main character is able to glide through levels with a press of the R button and the game has an interesting mechanic up its sleeve in that you meet friends throughout the levels, each with their own abilities. These friends then join you for the duration of that level and you must use their abilities as well as your own gliding skill to complete the level. Abilities you come across include opening new platforms, crashing through walls, skating on water and being able to wall jump. This is an interesting idea and not one I was expecting the game to throw at me having gone into the game mostly blind with the exception of maybe having seen a couple of screenshots prior to playing the game. To mix the gameplay up further, the game includes run stages. These have you been chased by the same malevolent creature from the opening cutscenes, and you must run non-stop, avoiding obstacles and scaling platforms, all the while trying to avoid being swallowed up by the beast. This was another way that Shu was reminiscent of Rayman Origins, as that game had similar levels. These sections occur towards the end of each set of levels, and although quite a surprise to begin with, they do start to feel overused by the end of the game, and become a bit of a drag to be perfectly honest. Gameplay gets a 14 out of 20. The game is very generous with its placement of checkpoints, and reaching a checkpoint also refills your life meter back to 5. For the most part, the game is not overly difficult. The hardest part by far for me was the final area, but even then this was not hugely difficult. The platforming was just a bit more fiddly and therefore more frustrating than what had come before. I finished the game in around 2 hours and 15 minutes. While this is very sure, I am someone that thinks platformers, more than most genres, can outstay their welcome a bit after a while. That being said, 2 hours is still a very short runtime, and whilst there are some incredibly short platformers that I return to regularly, such as Super Mario Land, Kirby's Dream Land or Adventure Island, this is not one that I imagine I will boot up too often in the future. The price of £7.69 is not overly expensive and the game does try to compensate for its short runtime with a time trial mode to try levels in as well as a number of collectibles on each stage. I give value a 13 out of 20. In conclusion, Shu is a solid platformer with some clever ideas. Not everything it tries always hits the mark and some of its tricks become a little tiresome towards the end. The difficulty in fully recommending this game comes when you consider that you can get a platformer like Pankapu on the eShop 
for about £3 more and it lasts four times as long. That being said though, I would still recommend you at least give Shu a passing fault if you are looking for a decent platformer to play on your Switch and with all the areas toted up, Shu receives an overall Switch Up score of 73%. My favourite 2D platformer of all time is probably Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. What's yours? Stick it in the comment section below. Stay tuned for our next review which releases tomorrow morning and will be the full part 2 Unbound. Take care everyone and again happy gaming.